please welcome from the University of Michigan, Mikey Sainristil. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for, you know, first and foremost, thank you for having me on the show today. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, super thankful for this opportunity. But yeah, I'm feeling great after the combine. I'm back in Texas right now, training for Pro Day. Uh, I'm in a super great place mentally and physically, so I'm doing great. So you're on the plane, you leave Indy. What are your thoughts? Like, what were your impressions of the combine? Is it what you thought it would be? Yeah, I think it was uh, easier than people made it seem to be. Um, but, you know, I was on the plane, uh, and I kind of was just telling myself, like, like, dude, you did a really good job out there. Like, you know, be proud of yourself. Um, and just, you know, cherish everything, every opportunity, every hand you shook. Like, just, you know, be happy for yourself. And, you know, you came a long way, but also understand that there's so much more uh, out there. Like, this is just the beginning of what's going to be great. So you obviously had a big-time combine performance, and congratulations. ESPN named you one of the biggest risers after the past weekend. You had the 447, you had a 40-inch vert. What was you? What are you most proud of with your experience? Just, you know, my ability to go out there and just prove myself, uh, you know, prove myself to be the person I have been telling myself I am. Um, I think I shocked more people, and I exceeded expectations, you know, rightfully so, but... To me, like, I did everything that I knew I was capable of doing. I wanted to go there and make sure I did every drill. Um, and then I tested and hit all the numbers I knew I could hit. And I'm super thankful of Exos, the facility I trained at, mm. uh, preparing me for everything that I had to do out there. And um, you know, I kind of, you know, the night before, just praying, like, I, you know, I, I knew that this combine was something that I've, I've been prepared for my whole entire life. Like, you know, going out there and doing drills is, I've been doing that since a little kid. Um, and it doesn't change because I'm doing it in front of 32 NFL teams because every week the stage that we played on, 32 teams watch this anyway. So it's like, just go out there, do the things that you've been blessed to do, and just, you know, have fun and enjoy with the guys that you're out there doing it with. Working out at one of the best facilities, Exos, and you had a nice little drop there. I appreciate that and all the hard work that those guys did in getting you ready. Now, you're going you're gonna to be in the NFL. You're going to grab a pick six, and I want to make sure the announcers get it right, okay? On your first one, your fifth one, the one that leads to your all-pro season, all of that. There's a lot of mics flying around here. Will you just correct so we all get it right in the NFL? We know everybody in Michigan knows, and maybe people who follow the college game. It's Mikey, right? Mikey Sainer still. That's correct. Okay. And if uh, anybody from Nike sees this, our first slogan, hoping for a, long, uh, a lifelong, you know, partnership, our slogan has to be Mikey like Nike. Mikey like Nike. Okay, I just, I'm, I'm, see, I was saying in the commercial break, I always just like fall in love with these prospects because you're all so amazing and positive and you already have your brand deal taken care of, which we love to see. Mikey, what was it, Mikey like Nike? Yeah. I love, it takes, takes me back to Michael Jordan, who you, I, we were probably too young to even have ever seen Michael Jordan and play when he was actually playing. Anyway, let's talk about Michigan, because you started your career there as a wide receiver, which I thought was interesting. Jim Harbaugh called you, and I would love to know what that conversation was. Was he just like, hey, what do you think about switching to DB? Was there any part of you that was like, no, I want to be a receiver. I should transfer. No, nah, because... Um... I kind of was like ready for it because I was joking around with the coaches, the defensive coaches the year before about, you know, if they ever need me to play defense, let me know I'll play any time they ask me to play. So like part of me was ready to play defense. And it was more so like I was joking around about playing defense, but I was also being kind of serious because I don't think I was producing that receiver as much as I thought I could. So when he called me, I was like, Coach, look, if you need me to play anywhere on this team, I'll play. And that was me being a leader, me wow. being a team guy, putting the team first. And the following day, I was in the defensive room learning the defense, you know, the basics of it. So, yeah, I would say at no point in time was I hesitant and was I, you know, thinking about myself. I was just like, Coach, you want me to do this for the team? You see something in me that I might not see right now, but I trust and believe in you. So I was ready to do it right away. Um, Matthew Hamilton, my producer, just texted me that Mike McDonald, of course, the new Seahawks coach, was one of those defensive coaches at Michigan. Can we talk to him? Yeah, it was it was him actually. I was telling I was telling I was like, hey, Coach, I'm ready whenever. So you just call my number and I'll you know I'll come to the defensive side. What do you think they saw in you, or what made you so confident that you could switch? Because you were you were a really talented wide receiver, but then you go on to have six picks last, last year. You had two pick sixes. The game ceiling 
pick in the national championship game, bright lights, big pressure, and then you become like the best nickel in the entire country. That decision changed your history and changed history. Yeah. I mean, what gave you the confidence that you could do that? Just like knowing uh, the fact that coach called me and could have got a transfer instead. He could have asked a, a guy who was already playing the corner to go play the nickel. But he asked me, he wanted me to do it. And just, I think part of why I was able to be so successful was my mindset and my willingness to put the team first and wanted to, you know, do everything I can to help the team. Because, you know, one thing that my old receiver coach, Coach Gaddis, I would always say is individual or with team success comes individual success. So mm. you put the team first and then you'll shine just as much as the team is shining. So I wanted to do everything I can in my power to make sure I was making sure the people around me are uplifted and I'm playing my hardest for the guys around me because in return, I know they'll do the same. Mikey like Nike. All right. I saw, I saw your combine presser and you were talking about Buddha Baker, one of my favorites. Buddha is coming on my show today. He's actually going to be on in just a couple minutes. Debo Samuel, Buddha Baker, and you. If, if you could ask Buddha one question and we'll show it to him, he, we'll get your answer. We'll put it out on Twitter. What do you want to ask him? Um, I would ask Buddha. Sheesh, what would I ask Buddha? I would ask Buddha, I would ask him, um, you know, being an undersized guy like myself, what's his mentality, you know, going in and stepping on that field and uh, what allows him to play as confident and as fast as he does. Okay, we're going to ask him that. I'm gonna give him a little love. You like his game, huh? I love his game. Um, I think something about us, you know, smaller frame guys allows us to play much bigger than we really are. Um, and I think, you know, having that mindset is what, you know, allows us to be in the light that we are. So, you know, Buddha, I look up to his game. I love the way he plays. Um, you know, hopefully soon I can have my name in the same conversation as Buddha. Yeah, I think you've got the mentality for sure. You've also got the talent out there. Uh, and I bet you're a good teammate. Your teammate, J.J. McCarthy, had a really nice combine as well. What do you want to say to anyone who says he didn't throw enough at Michigan to be able to succeed in the NFL? I would tell anybody out there, any scout, any, you know, GM, you put JJ, uh, you allow JJ to be the quarterback of your organization, he will help win. Um, I've seen him work day in, day out. I know the mentality he has, and that's, you know, that's QB number one in this NFL draft. So draft him, and I promise you'll be making a, a uh, great decision and, you know, taking J.J. McCarthy. How many times have you picked him off in practice? Be honest. I think twice. Twice. J.J., he used to dice us up. He used to dice us up in practice, but I think I had to <laughs> Uh Listen, there's a lot of stuff that I've learned about you getting ready for this interview. You were a rare two-time team captain at Michigan. You play multiple instruments. You play the violin. You were born in Haiti. You can, you know, you, you speak a different language. Like, uh, what... What do you want to make sure that these NFL coaches, these teams, the decision makers know about you? Um, I would just tell them, like, you know, drafting me, you're getting probably the safest pick in the NFL draft from a on-field standpoint, off-field standpoint, and from a business standpoint. I do a lot of things in the content creating space where I know that when I, you know, if I'm able to do it at a larger scale in the NFL, it can help increase tickets, uh, ticket sales and. Uh, as a GM, I think, you know, I bring somebody to my organization that can do those things for the organization, um, increase revenue. That's a, that's a plus. That's wow. a win. And then I'm getting that guy who is a leader, who's a winner. Um, and I just know that he's going to help, you know, my organi organization win. So, like I said, I believe that I'm the safest pick in this NFL draft. Um, and, you know, I love, I love the place that I'm in. And, you know, I'm just saying that confidently as well. That's not even me being you know, cocky or anything. I just know my ability and what I can do for a team. You're selling tickets. What an answer. I've done this a long time and I've never heard that uh, in an answer, I don't think. And I love to hear it. One last one for you. We have D Debo Samuel coming on the show. He might even be able to hear you backstage. Uh, how would you defend Debo Samuel? Debo Tough Samuel, uh, I think, you know, one, you have to respect the fact that he's a great route runner. He's strong. He's physical. But, you know, someone like me, I, I, I think I get up there, I, you know, I take away the space. Uh, I used to watch a lot of Debo Samuel tape when I was a receiver as well. So I kind of know his game a little bit. And, what, uh, what did you see? What do you notice when you watch Debo? Debo can run. He can scoot. Um, and like I said, he's physical at the top of the route. So he's quick as well. But, um, you know, hopefully that's a matchup that, you know, in the NFL I get to go against him week to week or, you know, 
potentially if I get drafted by the 49ers, I'm going against them every single day. And uh, him, you know, IU, Ronnie Bell, a former teammate of mine, uh, you know, just great receivers like that. I, I look forward to those challenges. So, yeah, Debo, I just, I'm telling you right now, if we get the chance to line up, I'm probably going to press it. <laughs> I'm sure he's listening. I think he's nodding backstage. We're going to take a short break. Mikey saying, we still, we so appreciate you. Good luck. Good luck selling tickets. Good luck with Nike. Good luck maybe in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, and then you'll be on the West Coast in the same state as your former coach, Jim Harbaugh. Sir, thank you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, I like the sir. Well, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. You're amazing. Enjoy. And shout out to Exos, everybody out there doing their thing, getting him set for the combine. And good luck at your pro day. You